shock. And uh, when I got down, I had to prepare before I went in to see them. I had to sterilize and wash my hands and put on protective clothing. And uh, I just went straight in. I didn't just prepare myself to look. I just went over and just before I knew what was happening, I was looking straight at my two daughters. And my first words were to the doctor, aren't they beautiful? And he, he sort of looked at me in surprise and he said, yes, I suppose they are. I saw photographs first, in case the shock would be too much. After seeing the photographs, I wanted to see them in reality. You know, photographs can only tell you so much. So when I saw them, they're just two little babies. I was amazed at how normal looking they were, you know. And um, they're frightened, I suppose, at the same time. Frightened that I would hurt them by holding them this way or that way. Like all mothers, she just, you know, she was just delighted with them. She just, they were her children, just like her other children. And she had just the same bonding at that moment that any mother would have to her newborn baby. I was afraid I'd bond too much. That, that was a worry, um, because we thought they'd die. And you were afraid to let yourself go too far to getting to know them. Prior to um, them being born, that thought did come to us that uh, we probably will not be able to accept them like we would accept other babies. But when we saw them and held them, that just evaporated away. It just wasn't a, it wasn't a consideration. Our heart was probably ruling our head at that stage. You know, we just didn't, we didn't logically think anymore. We were just our emotions were just taken over by the the joy of, of seeing the little children alive and, you know, wanting to be held like all newborn babies. and the twins, Katie on the right and Eilish on the left, are two and a half years old. They're playing with their three older sisters. Mary and Liam only found out they were expecting Siamese twins the day before they were born by caesarean section. Their doctors decided not to separate them. Now, go, Katie. Good girl. I think the natural response when you see twins like this is to see if they can be like the rest of us, whether that's good or bad, uh, and therefore lead separate existences. But equally, one would have to consider whether separating them just for the sake of conforming to our ideas of normality would in fact help them or kill them. Because this is a surgical procedure, especially in the first few months of life, that carries a reasonably high mortality. As the infants get older, the mortality rate drops and can get down as low as 10%. The Haltons live in a small village outside Dublin where the twins are well known. Sausages. Sausages. You want to hold them? They're cold. Are they cold? Yeah. Are they freezing? Yeah. It, we won't ever have a completely normal life because we will always be open to people gazing at us when we go out in public. But um, I think acceptance is probably what we want more than anything else. And, or even the, the security in our own, in ourselves that we're able to come and go as we please. Yeah, wash my hands. Yeah. Wash your hands again. Yeah. Wash my hands. I'm amazed at how normal it is. I, I know we strive to keep it normal, but I mean, I'm amazed that we're actually more or less able to manage that. We do, what most families do, trips to the zoo or trips to the supermarket and everybody goes. Hi, Mary, how are you? Hey, girl. You're not talking to me, no? Hey, not 
Is he tired? Are you tired, Catherine? Are you tired? We're very tired. Siamese twins are extremely rare. They occur once in a hundred thousand births when, purely by chance, an egg in the womb fails to divide successfully. Although Katie and Eilish are Siamese twins, their parents regard them as normal children in a unique situation. We might now maybe we'll take this off. Put the warm in here. I don't see how I would have coped in this situation at all. And yet Mrs. Horton meets you as though but everybody else is twins like this, so what's the problem? Are you thirsty? Get a drink? Okay. Do you want apple juice? Yes, Bobby. You want seven up? Ravina? I think it takes tremendous strength and uh, I suppose love to uh, achieve this kind of equanimity in dealing with a problem like they appear to have. Being brought up in that household, these twins are going to have great difficulty believing that there is really anything very much wrong with them. They're so much part of the family, so much part of everyday life. They are accepted in their community. Um, so they are not made to feel very different. Liam is a sales rep for a pharmaceutical company. Neither he nor Mary feels bitter. The situation was much greater than us, like crying over it or being angry over it or being bitter over it wasn't going to change the way the twins were. So then you had to look into another part of yourself and say, well, right, uh, if I have to accept, you know, this cross, Christians would probably call it a cross, you know, and the twins being the way they are is probably a cross. Like, how do you carry that cross lightly or uh, with meaning? You're coming a very round you can come this way, way like. You don't have to come around us. Physically, the twins are healthy, on, although doctors can't say for certain whether they'll live to a normal age. Faster, the they attend board. weekly physiotherapy oh. sessions to improve their That's mobility. Good. Over your are you good over here, Mr. Yeah. Right. Quickly. It will take a while before they can walk, I, I imagine. They're very top-heavy. No. And Why not look at me? their two legs are, are holding the, the weight of two bodies, which is a difficulty. In itself, and um, also, it's said that a baby develops from the head down, and I would imagine because they're able to sit up and just move on the floor, that their legs are not developed yet anyway. And the reason for physiotherapy is that we encourage them. Lift up that head, Irish, up you come, good girls, and one, well done, and down you go slowly now, as slowly as ever you like, and right down. I think you're having a rest halfway. I would hope myself that they will walk. Initially, I can see they'll start off with some appliance or other, that they just won't walk as a normal child would walk. Don't let me pull you backwards. They'll need something to support their upper body weight. Backwards. Come on. Good oh, no. girls. Well done. Well done. Is Mum helping with the toes down there? No. No. <laughs> Eilish is looking and Kate is hidden. Now who's there? Two girls. Two girls there. Go on. Pull them up again. Catherine likes a bit of fun. She likes to be in the middle of things. Irish is a little bit more reserved and likes to size people up and wouldn't be as uh, free making with people as Catherine. Oh, that's a nice dress. I think those balloons could go home, could they? They, they? they get on quite well, okay, most of the time. Occasionally there's a, a bit of a row, all right. Uh, if one has a particular toy and the other wants it, they can have a little scratching session or I'll bite you, baby. <laughs> The big splash on my face there. Is that nice, is it? Yes, you are. I'm going to go around me to your face. Claire, do you? messing? This way you go. Are you messing? I'm not messing. No, you're a good girl, aren't you? Oh, you're good like this. Oh, 
something in this and you blow it like this. Yeah, I'm gonna throw a horizontal there on me. <laughs> it's not a right time to snap. Now blow. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> what a okay, case, you only end up with a mouth of seven up, don't you? Now blow. Oh. I've got a Oh, the children are totally accepted. Adults, not so. Whereas they're quite chatty at home normally. Or within the close family circle, they are. But if strangers come in, they're inclined to shut up and say nothing. And Irish will observe and observe and observe and say nothing. But um, after a while, you find that they will talk. So, so are they quite shy? They, they would be shy, but they're terribly nosy. <laughs> they like to know what's going on. They, Eilish particularly. She has to really know what's going on. I suppose it's her way of uh, making sure that everything is okay and feeling safe. From the beginning, the question of separation has overshadowed the twins' lives. But it was certainly obvious from a very early stage that these twins were going to be severely physically handicapped, that it was going to be di difficult, if not virtually impossible, to separate them, and that this was going to present the parents with this terrible dilemma for many years to come. So my initial reaction was one of disappointment, horror, if you like, at the degree that the babies were going to be handicapped. Since the twins were basically healthy, the paediatricians in Dublin were able to delay surgery. They were heavily influenced by the fate of another set of Siamese twins born at the same hospital by an extraordinary coincidence just six weeks earlier. An attempt was made to separate them. They weren't as extensively joined as the, as the Holton twins. It was thought reasonable to attempt to separate these twins, but regretfully both twins died during the operation to separate them or shortly afterwards. We took off these old dirty socks, will we? Yeah. And they're wet. And they're wet. Ah, ah, for my shoe. Oh, yeah. Terrible, isn't it? Now, will we sit up? As they grew older, Katie and Eilish underwent tests to find out as much about their anatomy as possible. Although they have separate hearts and lungs, they share other internal organs. They're more severely joined than any Siamese twins who've been successfully separated in the past. I'm very tired. Staying together, they really don't exhibit much sign of illness. They are healthy children. They are leading a good life. Separated, they are going to be uh, devoid of a number of the organs and appendages which the rest of us have to allow us to lead a normal life. So we would in no way be promising them a normal life if they were separated. Like I mean, there are an awful lot of questions to be asked. It's not something that you say, yeah, we will do that anyway. You have to know would the life, their life be better if we were to go ahead or would they live? We have to know the risks, which I'm sure are high. There's a lot of um, doubt about the liver the possibility of separating the liver uh, one or other might have to have a liver transplant and that would entail major risks but apart from that um, uh, the pelvis is shared by both so they would only have a half a pelvis each if they were separated so really would we improve the quality of their life to any major degree by separating them, just for the sake of separating them. Oh, I see what's going on. <laughs> I see what's going on too. <sighs> the fact that Katie and Eilish appear to be happy together has made their doctors wonder whether they should be separated, even if it is possible. <laughs> The rest of us looking at people like this think that they are different and being different is wrong and therefore that creates one pressure. Um, the other part of it is it is 
possible, I think, for two people to have a very close relationship and perhaps not to see it as a disadvantage to be together to this degree all the time. That's theoretical. So though we value individuality, they might not value it. They might prefer togetherness. If their relationship is such, they could very well be happy with their togetherness. Now, now Since only Katie and Eilish can answer this question, should they be the ones to decide whether or not they're separated? If they are left together long enough, yes, I could see that happening. But I think we would really be talking about, I suppose, almost the end of the first decade before you would be, they would be able to appreciate all that is involved and be able to give some kind of judgment. They will have had a life together. They will, at that stage, have seen how different other people are they will be aware of other people's attitudes much more than they are now. They may feel that the end result is worth this. I think at this stage, the end result is a doubtful quantity for them. And uh, I suppose just being a procrastinator, I would certainly not want to make that decision for them. Let me see if there's a fish in the river. Yeah, we'll look in and see if there's a fish. Nice. Summer 1991, and the Holton's doctors in Dublin have now made it clear that they're unable to give a definite verdict on whether Katie and Eilish can be separated. So they've written to three hospitals around the world which have pioneered operations in this field. Toronto, Philadelphia, and Great Ormond Street in London. The answers are eagerly awaited. What's the duck? Is that the duck? What's the duck saying? Quack, quack. What's he saying? All I hear about these days is mutual funds. Seems like everybody's getting into them. I just don't know. But we've got to get our money working harder. I should look into them. I don't even know where to start. Call investors today. Hey, if you want chicken tonight simmer sauces from Ragu, flap your wings. I feel like chicken tonight, like chicken tonight. Try our two new flavors, Spanish chicken and creamy chicken primavera. Just brown, simmer, and serve. I feel like chicken tonight. Now, cleaning, I know. On the one hand, you got a leading powder. It works, but at what price? On the other hand, that one there, you got cream. Clean, just look at how clean. Now feel, you see, grit. Cream, on the other hand, smooth, gorgeous. Fim cream cleanser, tough yet gentle. Got it? Good. I'll never go back to denture paste or powders again. Here's why. Seabond Denture Adhesive. No other adhesive works like Seabond, and it holds dentures so tight, so long. Seabond combines two powerful adhesives into a soft, micro-thin seal that bonds your dentures to your gums, holds them comfortably all day long. I'll never, never go back to paste or powders. There's no messy cleanup. Seabond is so easy to remove. Nothing holds dentures like Seabond. You'll never go back to paste or powders again. Wait! I'm having a snack attack! Captain Nibbler, to the rescue! With cheese nibblers from McCain, the delicious, nutritious snack that satisfies your sudden hunger as only the taste of real cheese can! We're having a snack attack! McCain makes nibblers from cheddar, mozzarella, Monterey, or marble cheese in convenient single snacks and multi bags. So when you feel a snack attack coming on, grab a McCain cheese nibbler! Now available in pizza and nachos! Would you like me to get you a big duck? August 1991, and the three hospitals consulted have all replied. It now looks as if the twins can be separated if further tests prove positive. But it will be the most difficult operation of its kind ever undertaken. Our twins are so dear to us that we don't want to take any risks with our lives. Going ahead with a separation is a very risky business, particularly at the moment 
the twins are healthy, the twins are developing, uh, in a, both mentally and physically, they're becoming more mobile. So uh, separation might um, offset all those benefits. And until a very, very good case is put towards us, that separation could be a benefit to Catherine and Eilish, uh, we will not consider it as a possibility. Mary and Liam have come to Great Ormond Street Hospital in London to meet Professor Lewis Spitz, head of paediatric surgery, and her son and Hussein, Siamese twins from Sudan, who were separated five years ago when they were just a few months old. Come on, boys. Oh. Hassan. That's Hassan. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. Now you can wash it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we have five children as well, and you have five. That's right. Yes. Similarities. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Catherine and Eilish. Eilish is there. Uh, and Elizabeth. It's the same as Elizabeth. Yeah. Elizabeth is young. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> they do the same things. So, um, yes, they cooperate pretty well on what they want to do. To they don't like, walk either. One thing they do now, and it's very interesting, if you give them a, a, a bottle, say a, an empty lemonade bottle, oh. Catherine will hold the bottle and Eilish will screw off the lid. So they, they cooperate to get... Yeah, because yeah, they, they use one hand, the other, yes, yeah. But they can do that, yes. It was the first time we ever met anyone face to face that had been through what we've been through, and they've been through more because they've been through the trauma of, of surgery and seen their children, you know, being, being separated and happily seeing them, you know, come out of it successfully. Would you like to come to me? Yeah, I'd like to hold you. Great. Oh, God. Good man. That's good. Yeah. Heavy? Are you comfortable there? Must be all the sweets. <laughs> Please eat all the sweets. I, I was, I was yeah. quite upset earlier because I, I suppose it, it just hit me. The impact of meeting these people and, and maybe what we may have to go through. If, if they were to be like Hassan and Hussein, they'd have, a, they'd have, to, have to get an artificial leg. We found that um, the twins' father was very much of the opinion that we should go ahead and he could see no other option. I, I think this maybe upset me somewhat, though I could see from Pfizer that she was more... She had gone through the situation and she could uh, feel for us, and probably a mixture of all emotions, uh, I was quite uh, quite upset, you know. Aye, great. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, I didn't know if they could walk or not, and I think it's absolutely brilliant that they can walk. It was amazing to see these two little people as two human beings, individuals, and um, how one of them seemed to be terribly outgoing. I think it is Hassan, and Hussein was quite reserved and sized us up a little bit. But um, it, and to see them walk, I mean, I didn't know until Tuesday that they could walk. And to actually see it, it was marvellous. It was brilliant to see them flying around and getting on with their lives and eating their sweets and getting sick with them and everything. It was brilliant. Um, it, it definitely had a huge impact on me. Oh! 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 Anybody want some of this? Now look what we have. We have some cake. Look, it's a lovely cake, isn't it? Will oh, you blow out your candles? Yeah. We'll make some more, will we? Yeah, you can get together again. More sweets. Oh, where will we put it? This way. Oh, will we go this way? Right, we're going to light the candles. Oh, hey! We're going to light the candles. 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 We're going
Exactly. The, the yeah. 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 they embrace the very flavor of France. The superior taste and delicate aroma of all Tour Eiffel pâtés are still preferred as a rewarding snack or the perfect choice for entertaining. Try Tour Eiffel pâtés from the cane, like liver and country style, and enjoy the flavor of France. <laughs> Shoppers Drug Mart. Wow. Here we go again. Hurry to Shoppers Drug Mart now and get $25 in savings coupons to use at Harvey's and Swiss Chalet. Oh, what a deal. Save on juicy charbroiled hamburgers at Harvey's. Wow. Save on delicious barbecue chicken at Swiss Chalet. We can save big at Shoppers Drug Mart. Honey, you've got to stop saying, wow. Well, save up to $25 now. <laughs> Make this the winter you learn to ski better with tips and techniques from Ski's top teaching pros. Found in this all-new Ski Better Now video, yours free. Call this toll-free number today, and Ski Magazine will send you this video free with your paid subscription of only $11.94. Enjoy a full season of Ski Magazine, America's top-rated magazine for skiers. Beginner or expert, reach new levels of ability. Call today to get Ski Magazine, plus your free video, and Ski Better Now. Germany's new Nazi leaders say they're getting plenty of help from a Canadian. This material comes from Canada. It's published by Ernst Sünder. I'm Victor Malrich with the Canadian connection to Germany's neo-Nazis on the next Fifth Estate. This week on The Passionate Eye, revolution in the 60s and the time's most wanted radical action group, the notorious Weather Underground. Violence in the name of revolution, Saturday on The Passionate Eye. December 1991, and Mary and Liam have come to see Professor Spitz again to help them decide whether or not to go ahead. Nice to see you again. He's been to Dublin to examine the twins and now feels positive about surgery. Good trip over. Thanks yeah. very much, yes. Excellent. Excellent. Yes, I think at this stage in their lives it would be uh, impossible to say we'll sacrifice one in favor of the other we either go for survival of both very strong plus is that the hearts are separate mm -hmm. the lungs are separate and the vertebral columns are separate right down to the base right. now once you have got that set up 
the next difficult area is the liver. It is a big decision and that there are major risks in putting our children forward for this surgery and would you have anything to say to you know reassure us or help us in making the decision? I think you should view it as if all three of us and the two girls are in it together. We have the same interests at heart, we want the same out of the procedure, we want success and we will strive to our best ability in order to achieve success. We're all sharing the same feelings. Oh. Yes. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's lovely. I'll turn back. I know we were to try and make up our minds by the middle of October and we couldn't and it went on to the middle of November and we still couldn't. And we thought, well, that by going to London again and meeting Professor Spitz and asking him the few questions that we had, we felt that that actually would help us. But um, I think just before that, I probably made my mind up that we should go ahead. And this, Mary. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, giddy pair. Oh, yeah. You giddy pair. Oh, you going to sit down? Get up again now yourselves. I had all those, you know, insecurities and, and doubts about going ahead with separation. But um, as Mary said, uh, uh, London, the last visit to London uh, to Professor Spitz really uh, changed all that. We, we um, asked him a few questions about risks and uh, he, the answers he gave us were, were, were really very reassuring that the risks weren't as great as we had uh, imagined them to be. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Painting. Yeah. Shall we? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, ready? Ready? Okay. There's a paint. Ready? There. January 1992, and the twins, Katie on the right and Eilish on the left, are settling in at Great Ormond Street Hospital. But their parents have been reminded that at any stage before the operation, they can change their minds and decide not to go ahead. What other colours are there? Um, um, green one? It's been great, everything's fine. Uh, every staff have been fantastic, everybody's been good. The twins have been excellent. That's probably one of the major concerns. They've been excellent, they don't miss home. And, um, you know, they've been in good form. What do you want to do Sarah's hand? Mm. I'm painting. Mm. Mm. This is an enormous undertaking, and uh, none of us are have any doubts that this is a, a vast procedure to perform. The main areas of difficulty, I think, are first of all the deciding the degree of separation of all the internal organs. We know, for example, that they share various pelvic organs and therefore one will have to make decisions about whether these organs can be split or whether you have to give something to one twin and something to the other twin. So that's the first point. We haven't come across a major bar to separation in our analysis so far of the degree to which they share their internal organs. The second point about their separation will be the difficulty of obtaining skin cover in the conjoined area between the twins. This may not look very large, but the area is in fact quite vast between the shoulder and the base of the pelvis. 
And if you imagine that if you just separate those two individuals and leave a raw area, that is an enormous area from wh over which skin has to grow or be placed. Can I make both? Can I take a little cord? Oh, oh, am I not allowed? No. Oh. It's all. No, oh, something's wrong with it. What's wrong with it? Magic. Oh. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello, girls. How are you today? All right. A few weeks later, Good. and the twins have now had a small operation to insert four tissue expanders which will be pumped up at regular intervals using syringes full of water. The extra skin will eventually be used to cover the wound after separation. So what we've got here is we've got our first tissue expander in here, and this is where we've been injecting this, isn't it? And then we've got two in their tummies, one That's on this side and one on this side. And again, we've been injecting those there and there. At times, you, it occurs to you that you're putting them through an awful lot of trauma or whatever. Um, I've never changed my mind. Um, I've never once questioned why I'm here. Um, I've made my decision and I'm standing by it. And I know that it's the best for Katie and Alish. And everybody in the hospital is very supportive, uh, very helpful and extremely confident, which Maybe that's an area that I don't always tune in on with everybody else, but that's probably just from a parent's point of view. You feeling tired? Yeah. Are you tired? March 1992, and the tissue expansion is almost complete. But the twins have been through a rough patch. They lost weight and now have to be tube fed. That's my clothes. That's why it's my hair was. The white job that I wash your hair with. If we go back and look at twins who have gone through this before in this hospital, I know in the latter stages they've been quite sick and have had quite a rough time. And I think in a sense we've been lucky. We haven't got to a very critical stage yet. You haven't a cuddle, are you? Did you cuddle? Oh, my eyebrow again, is it? Oh. Yeah, you like doing that, don't you? They're quite happy in themselves, and they're happy being here, which is very good. I mean, I think if they were unhappy in themselves, it would be a lot harder on us. Maybe she's rubbing Katie's ear. Yeah. Any pains today? No. Oh, that's great. Right. You just feel you have to keep going. You know, I just feel that when I'm in the spot, I just have to cope. And I don't know where the strength is coming from, but we seem to be surviving day by day. We don't look too far ahead. We just seem to just take each day as it comes, and it seems to be the best attitude to cope with it. Which is Katie? To see them, girls. That's Katie. That's Katie. That's And that's Andy. And look, they get some tube feeding. Oh, yeah, they've tubes. The same as Katie and Alice do. And they have a very pretty dress. Right, will we let Katie and Alice separate the dolls? I don't want to. You don't want to? Oh, you do. Oh, you let me do it. Will we give them some magic gas? Oh, yeah. Will we? And you get the gas. At the back as well. Oh. And you get the gas. No. Look at the dollies getting their gas. Do you see it, Therese? See the do you see it, Mairead? Yeah. Mairead actually saw this happening yesterday, didn't you, Mairead? You saw Katie and Irish being put to sleep put to like sleep this yesterday, yesterday didn't, didn't you? And, no, uh, I think no. they're just asleep. No, they're just asleep. I'll take them away the gas. They're only three and a half, they can't comprehend as I can, but they have an idea of what's, what's about to happen. We've been using some Cabbage Patch dolls, which we've adapted to look like Katie and Eilish, and we've called them Katie and Eilish, and we go through a little routine, usually every day, and we take them apart, and we can play with each one individual, and we reassure them that we're going to be here through all of this terrible trauma. This one is Eilish. And Eilish. And this is Katie. Yes. Alice. Would you like to hold one of the twins now? Would you like to hold Katie? Yeah. Would you like Katie. to hold Eilish? Would you like to hold Eilish? No. And you can give them a special cuddle. Give them a special cuddle now. You don't have to give them a cuddle when they're stuck together anymore, no? Yeah. Classically speaking, they would be called uh, thoraco omphalo ischiopagus bipus uh, conjoined twins, which means they're joined at the chest, the abdomen, the pelvis and they have two lower limbs. A few days later and the operation is going ahead. The team of surgeons, anaesthetists and nurses has its first detailed planning meeting. There's this question about 
fusion or overlap of the left lobes of the liver, and I suspect that will be a combination of both. I think we That's have all the information we could possibly have about what is shared, what blood vessels cross from one uh, individual to the other. Uh, we will know which vessels to control. But um, in spite of this, there must be a small risk involved with the procedure, and uh, we accept that, and the parents right accept it as well. Which crosses to the renal bed. It's difficult to show. Yes, I think, I think the, the actual operative procedure is the major risk element to separation. After separation, there may be problems with skin cover and uh, superficial infection, but uh, once physical separation has taken place, the chances of survival are good. How are you all feeling today? Oh, it's a really funny day. It's hard to know how we're feeling, really. It's just, um, it's just coming to the big event, and uh, once you think you might be prepared for it, you just don't know how you feel until you're right in the middle of it. And I'm a bit numb at the moment, really. It's uh, the impact of it hit me about two days ago, and. And it went for me. It's coming back again now. It's, sometimes when I just look at the twins, it just hits me real bad. And then it sort of goes away from me then when someone comes in to talk to us or that. You know, it, it occupies you. I think the fact that people are calling in is a good thing. You know, it keeps us occupied. It's good therapy for us, too, because if we hadn't anyone calling in, we're just sitting here with the twins on our own all the time. I think it would be much harder, really. I'm not so sure how I feel. I mean, at this stage, I wish it was the day. I find waiting around is a little bit stressful and um, there are quite a few things the girls have to have done yet <coughs> but um, I think I'm in bits really. <laughs> um, forget it. Does he like your sweets? Does he? Are you going to give them one? I'm going to give him a sweetie. Look at him. He wants a sweetie. I'm giving him one. He sees the other teddy bears on the bank. He thinks there's special teddy bear sweets in there. Canadian holidays. We believe that if you spend too much time worrying about your vacation, it isn't a vacation. There's one cake so good, it will keep you coming back for more. McCain Deep and Delicious Cakes, sealed with a see-through dome to keep in all that rich, moist, deliciously fresh taste. So, you can raid the cake tray, seal up the rest, and put it back in the freezer. Till you're ready for the very next craving. And now for people who fantasize about chocolate, deep and delicious chocolate deluxe from McCain. Sixteen candles, though we gotta say goodbye. 
Maybe no one ever forgets prom night because of all the great memories. Well, Sessions brings back all those great memories with a new four-record album called Senior Prom. Just listen. Roses are red, my love. Hey, hey, prom. So darling, darling, stand by me. You are One summer night. Too late. This incredible four record and three cassette treasury is yours for only $19.95. Two compact discs, only $24.95. Here's how to order. Call toll free 1 800 945 3954. That's 1 800 945 3954. Or send check or money order to the address on your screen. She was very withdrawn when she came out of sedation, but then again, the drugs, I think the effect of the drugs, the withdrawal from the drugs would, would account for some of that. But obviously, uh, the loss of Katie must have accounted for, you know, how depressed she was. I mean, when she would wake you up from a sleep, she would look down at the side Katie was, and she would sort of give a kind of a jerking reaction and then she might sometimes start to cry and be distressed so even though she didn't talk to us as I was saying she didn't talk very much we, we felt that she must have been go going through a very traumatic uh, grieving process. Katie's death due to heart failure four days after the operation was totally unexpected her post-mortem revealed a weak heart. It was such a pity, really, to lose Katie. But on the other hand, we have the comfort of knowing that had we not separated Katie and Eilish, that we could have lost both Katie and Eilish due to Katie's heart being so weak. She's lovely and clean and fresh now. Sorry? Do you want another wet one? Okay. It's amazing. Some of Katie still lives in Eilish, you know, I mean, Eilish's personality was, uh, you know, probably a more serious personality prior to, you know, the vision. And now she has acquired a lot of the giggling and playfulness that would have been Katie. So it's as like as though she has probably taken on board some of Katie's roles, and which is lovely to see. So when we look at Eilish today, we see some of Katie there in spirit. Well, that's a hammer. That's like when you have a headache. Press the airplane. Right. Oh, the airplane again. Press the air corns. That's not acorns. That's a tree. Who else is there? Who else is there? Who's that guy? Who's that guy? Oh, that's Pluto. Oh, that's Pluto. Mm. No, we've no regrets at all. We'll always miss Katie, in a sense, you know, she's been such a part of our life. Um, at the same time, you have to put your emotions on hold because you, you're so concerned with Eilish and you have to get Eilish well and get her home. That in a sense, and I'm living in this, you know, it's not a home environment here. But, I mean, it's quite good and all that, but I mean, I feel that I probably have things on delay until I get home. And I've been home once since Katie's funeral and I found it very upsetting. I found it extremely hard to settle in here afterwards. And um, I really can't wait till I get home with Eilish. You know, I feel that then I can, I can go on from then. At the moment, I'm on hold. Mm. Any secrets today? No secrets? Oh, 
that happen? If we all do this, hmm? will you share your secrets? Oh, no.